<coughs> excuse me good way to start my broadcast good afternoon welcome to episode 682 and the topic today i'm messing with so the title doesn't make a lot of sense it's it's basically um what was i started with <laughs> basically i want to play with some words and those phrases are have to try and uh the other ones in there come a second but i'll get to that in a second I did a couple of talks last, well, no, sorry, I'm jumping ahead. Let me introduce myself first, and I'll tell you why this is going on and why it may be relevant to you. My name is, is Barry Selby. I'm a best-selling author, speaker, and relationship attraction expert, and I help, people, I help women create balance in love, life, and business. I'm a passionate champion for the divine feminine, which informs my work with women, and also why I do these talks every day, which are officially called Messages from the Masculine Inspiring Your Feminine Heart. They're abbreviated to MFTM just for convenience, because the titles get longer and longer and longer otherwise. And I did a couple of talks last week um, on on can't was the first one, and then I think I did one on should, but I didn't do the rest of them. I thought I'd throw them all together in this one, which is have to, no, did it have to already? Try. <laughs> I'm just trying to remember these, yeah, see, so trying to remember these. Um, I'm going to talk about some things you might want to learn about how to use in your communication language and self-talk. This will improve your relationships with yourself, with other people, and your primary relationships. So this could be useful to you. So I'll keep this brief because I'm actually in the middle of doing some other projects and this is a Sunday broadcast which usually is shorter than the rest of the time. But I want to speak to this because co conscious languaging, and I'm not using the term conscious language specifically because that's a brand and I know I have great respect for the person who created conscious language which is even another level above what I'm talking about here. This is nuts and bolts language skills I'm giving you to change the way that you create results and change the way you relate to other people. It may sound impressive, but it's really quite simple. Because certain words that we use in our language by default because we're not trained other ways are very limiting in creating our reality. There's um, several different I'll say this. Now let me back and do it another way. So let me let me let me do a quick recap. So I did talk about can't a week ago, which is basically how we have a bad habit, we as a population, by believing we can't have something, and so by that belief we we exclude it from our possibility. So that was the talk I did last um, Monday, I think. So it's about a week ago, and that was. Um, about how we speak that into the world but also how we think it in our heads because both places is where those words get stuck so let me play with the word try because that's one of these juicy ones um when you say you're going to try and do something when you when someone invites you like you know let's go out for coffee on uh, on thursday and you say i'll try and be there it's a really in a way um it's a very limiting word to use first of all so try is a very limiting word period but the thing about try is it's actually impossible to do anything. In the definition in the dictionary, which I don't have in front of me to quote you, basically when you try to do something, so for example, if I say I wanna, um, I wanna try to take this ring off, I'm not taking it off. If I take off the ring, that's taking it off. But to try means it doesn't move, it's not getting anywhere. And the thing is, when you try really hard, you're actually putting a lot of energy into not moving because try doesn't do it. Doing does it, to basically misquote Yoda. But try is one of those words that we use a lot in our language. You know, yeah, I'll try. Or I'll try and do that. Let me have a try. All these different words, it's really limiting what's possible because we're telling ourselves we can't do something. When you say that you try and do something, you're saying, no, I'm not going to do it. So when your friends invite you to do something, to go somewhere, to be with them, and you say, I'll try, you're basically saying, no, I'm not. So. First of all, I highly recommend being honest. And secondly, just be conscious of what you're saying to yourself, because this is one of the words that gets in the way. Another one I'm throwing you quickly is but. And I'm using this word, I'm, I'm putting this word in there too, because in language, what, what the word but does is negate everything that preceded it. So in your loving communication with your sweetheart, and you say, I love everything about you, but I wish you would do this, you're actually saying, I don't love you at all. Yeah, that's how dangerous it is. So the word but is another one of these words that we use in common language. Nobody thinks about it really consciously, unless you become aware of it. But the word is literally 
a um, delete button for everything that came before it. So I'd recommend watching that and saying something different. A lot of times we'll say um, replace but with and. So for example, if you said something like, you know, I really love the way you are, I'm, I'm in love with you, you're amazing, but da 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 da, say instead, I love who you are, I'm enjoying being with this amazing relationship, and this would be better if we did this. That simple switch, three letters from but to and, could change every relationship you're in, including the one with yourself. So I recommend taking that to heart. So that's two words to play with. The third one I think I said was um, have to, yeah, it was have to. This is another one of these, these words that we think about, sorry, that we use without thinking about it. And the thing, the thing about it is when you say you have to do something, you're taking away the possibility of choice. And this is, I'm giving you short, this is very quick, by the way, I'm giving you very cliff notes on three major word um, traps that we fall into. So have to be the third one is the, um, I'll show you this. Hmm. It's the elimination of choice. Because when you say that you have to do something, you can't not do that. You have to do it. It's like, I have to do this. No choice. I have to go do that. The reality is when you say things like that, oftentimes it's not the truth. Like, here's one, for example, funny office one. You know, you say, well, I have to go to work. Do you really have to go to work? Well, yes. If you want to get, you want to get on a salary, great. Okay, so you have to go to work so you can earn a salary. But the thing is, there are other things you do to earn a salary or earn the income equivalent of that. So when you say I have to, that's not really true. It's actually a false choice. And because you made a false choice, it limits what you possibly can do. When you say instead that I choose to go to work, then you take your power back. Because when you're saying you have to, you're giving away your power. And if you've watched my broadcast before, I'm very much about reminding you to take your power back and own who you are. So instead of saying have to and saying I choose to, that again, shift of language is very simple. Is, ta is taking the power that you put up there and put it back inside yourself. So instead of saying, I have to do something, I have to get the car serviced. No, I choose to. Because if you don't get it serviced, it might blow up. You know, it's sort of, there's, a, there's a consequence if you don't do it. But it's a choice because then you have the power to say, I'm choosing to do this today or I choose to do it tomorrow. When you have to do that today, there's no wiggle room. There's no choice available. So have to equates to no choice. So if you want to do things by choice, then say I choose to instead of have to. So that's the three I was going to give you today. And I want to keep this very brief because these are things I want to give you these like cliff note bullet points saying, think about these three things. Try, ineffective, do or don't do, as, as uh, Yoda would say, because there is no try. Absolutely, fundamentally true. So yeah, I had to quote the Yoda quote officially because that's the right one. So try but is an exclusionary delete button for everything that came before it. Unless you want to really use it that way, I wouldn't use it at all, and works better than that. And then have to, replace that with choose to. Try those, try those three, <laughs> I just did it myself. <clears throat> Experiment with these three. <laughs> See this thing with try, it is, a, it is a very convenient word and I use it myself, so I'm watching myself change it out. So experiment with not using try, replacing but with and, and replacing have to with, cho with choose to and see what happens in your life. By putting, um, you can say this, putting some simple words into action, it will actually change your life. And I'm, I, it may sound so simplistic, but I'm being really clear about this. You can change your life. Hi, Deborah, in the SEMA broadcast. Um, by changing the language you use, you can change your life. So what are two, the two I gave you last week, which is can't and should, combined with these three, which is try, have to, and, and but, th those five, phrases, words, are game changers in your unconscious languaging. Now, by the way, I, was, I mentioned there's a person I know who used the, who used the, actually has the branding of conscious language, and that is, um, <laughs> it'll come back to me. Yeah, what, exactly. Thank you, I agree, yes. Words have power, small shifts, huge rewards. Thank you for that, yes. By the way, if you're watching on YouTube, this is a Facebook Live first, so I'm actually repeating the comments see, I see on the screen, so you know what was said in the comments. Um, yeah, and it's simple stuff. I, mean, I learned this stuff in a seminar, and just to give you a, a, a context, so you know where I learned this languaging. I've learned over the years in many different seminars and trainings, but one particular training we did, it was a six-week course. And in that training, the first weekend of the course, we self-disclosed our ground rules and guidelines for the seminar. And 
What we did was look at vi words that were violation words. And all the words I mentioned are violation words. There's, one, there's another one in there too, if I remember what it was. And what we did was we put up a sheet of paper, like a poster sheet of paper on, on the walls in the room we were in. And so we had should, but, have to, try, can't. There's maybe one other one. And we then said, okay, we're gonna put a value on each one of those, a dollar amount. And then anytime we were sharing in the group and we use one of those words and we got caught on it because we get caught, we called each other on this stuff, we put our name up on the board and then we'd have like a tick mark next to our name. So by the end of the six week course, some of us had racked up hundreds of dollars in fines. Now, we, we chose to do this for charity, so we did actually raise money for charity this way. Not that I'm saying you should do it that way. <laughs> but it became very clear after doing that, the price we paid literally for using those words became a lesson that never went away for me. So I'm giving this as a gift, so you don't have to do the learning I went through, but I recommend that you too look at the words you use. Consciously being aware of what you say, internally and externally, will indeed change your life. Small shifts, huge rewards, as Deborah put it. Thank you for that. So that's my little tip for the day. It's my little Sunday broadcast, keeping it short because it's, it's a Sunday, so I'm being more relaxed and more casual. But I want to just drop this hint because, frankly, besides, as I've talked about before, clear intentions and affirmations and everything else, these simple words can change your life dramatically. So with that, I'm just going to quickly recap. We can find my broadcast if you haven't seen them before. And then I'm going to sign off because I've got other things to do tonight. So this is my Facebook Live I do every day at 5 p.m. Pacific time. Welcome to join me every time you want on my personal page, which is Barry Selby. The replays go onto my business page on Facebook, which is barryselby.author. So you can watch all my replays there. And, uh, and happy Sunday to you too, Deborah. Nice to see you. And uh, love the hat you wore on your broadcast from yesterday, by the way. That was, that was, a, that was a fun fashion statement. With the <laughs> Anyway, um, so replays on my business page on Facebook, which is barryselby.author. And then I have a also on my YouTube channel for those people who don't do Facebook. If you go to if you go to youtube.com sorry if you go to my, if you find Barry Selby's the channel my channel on on YouTube please subscribe and then in there is a playlist called messages from the masculinity you can watch them there so that is basically that um, I appreciate you watching if you think anybody should watch this please share it with them of course if you have any questions about this particular broadcast please put them below and I will also as always I'll put the link in the comments for a discovery session if you really are realizing that you want some help in languaging relationships and focus where you want to put your energy in love. So with that, I thank you for watching. I'll be back in tomorrow, same time, same channel. And uh, have a great Sunday. I'll see you again tomorrow.